Real Virginia is produced by the Virginia Farm Bureau. Farming, it's all good. Visit our website at vafarmbureau.org. Chesapeake Bay, Atlantic to Appalachia, home in my heart always. Hello everyone and welcome to Real Virginia, a show about Virginia agriculture and the people who produce all of the wonderful products we enjoy. Farmers are being encouraged to partner with local food banks to help feed Virginians in need. You can grow your own salsa this garden season. We'll show you how. And Farham College is one of the nation's few private schools to offer agriculture majors to students. Welcome back, everyone. We're here at Strange's Florist and Greenhouse in Richmond, Virginia, where spring has sprung. And of course, that means that it is growing season. And as Norm Hyde tells us, local Virginia food banks are looking for farmers to grow fresh fruits and vegetables in hopes of buying some of their produce. That's right. I said buying some of their produce. There's a lot of food coming from generous donors at the Southeastern Virginia Food Bank in Norfolk. The warehouse is bustling with supplies and the Federation of Virginia Food Banks reaches across the state to help those less fortunate. There's seven food banks in Virginia and the D.C. area provided over 142 million pounds of food and grocery products. And we're providing food access to people in need uh, over two million, almost two million people in the state of Virginia. But Van Horn says especially in late winter there's not a lot of fresh produce available and that's a challenge. We have a lot of mobile pantries uh, that go throughout the state of Virginia in rural areas and typically those food banks are requiring that a certain percentage of food on the mobile pantries be fresh produce. So we really would like to have access to local produce because it will last longer. It helps us and it also helps the local farmers. Produce farmer W.T. Nottingham raises peaches and fresh vegetables in Northampton County on Virginia's eastern shore. He's donated to the food bank in the past and is willing to do so again. Initially we started as vegetable farmers and, and then what happened over time we kind of migrated into a mom and pop farm stand business. The food bank, we got involved with the food bank for several reasons through St. Andrew's Society primarily as gleaners came, the kids came in the summer and We've always had a surplus at times and we like to have it be utilized before the point where before it came, went from useful to useless. So food bank being here on the Eastern Shore and, and we felt obligated to help people close to home. The good news is that food banks have funds available this year and they want farmers to know they could do more than just accept donations. We have a, uh, a huge need for fresh produce in our warehouses and we've realized we've not really taken the time to inform the farmers in the state of Virginia that, hey, we're out here and we would love to be able to purchase some of your produce, especially when it comes to second or thirds, or if you've gone somewhere to drop off produce and it's being rejected, we would love to be the person that you call. Nottingham says it's a good idea for food banks to reach out to farmers early in the season, especially if they haven't finalized their plans. He realizes it's not easy to get fresh produce year round. The most challenging thing probably for the food bank is the seasonal nature of produce in Virginia. I mean, we're a, basically a Memorial Day through Labor Day deal. Some start sooner, some linger longer, but the bulk of it is a summer deal. And obviously people in Virginia need product or, or food all through these the growing all through the year not just in the growing season so but I, I don't think you'll find a person or farmer in the in the commonwealth that would not be willing to work with you i can't imagine one but while nottingham says he's glad to help he still has to turn a profit that's why he was glad to hear about the proposal from the food banks van horn says they are reaching out to their networks now in the spring one of the reasons that we're pursuing produce is we've developed a really great working relationship with our State Department of Agriculture and also the Virginia Farm Bureau. So we really want to take the next steps and figure out how we can fill the gap of the fresh produce that we really want access to. With this much goodwill on both sides, there's a good chance some new deals will be struck, bringing more fresh produce to hungry Virginians this growing season. In Norfolk, Virginia, I'm Norm Hyde.
After a long winter, many gardeners, chefs, and cooks can't wait for fresh vegetables during the growing season. April means there's already some new crops on the way. This is the first month for fresh asparagus in Virginia for greens and spinach and onions. Plus, fresh herbs are available almost year-round in the Old Dominion. Beginning in May, fresh beets will be in harvest and strawberries will hit their peak. And in June, almost all varieties of fresh vegetables will be in season. Some produce farmers are extending their season thanks to hoop houses and other ways of sheltering their crops. Coming up, we're going to talk about crops that you can use to make salsa from the ground up. Please stay tuned. I feel that family farms are very important because it's not just a living or occupation, it's a way of life. We live, work, and play right here in one location. The grandchildren are around and as often as they can, they'll come and say, Grandma, can I help? There's a lot of challenges, but by having to be a family operation, it makes it all more enjoyable. This is what I do, it's my livelihood, I enjoy doing it. This is my hobby, it's my vocation. It's a wonderful place to enjoy life with my wife, my children and grandchildren. We're putting out a product for other people to drink and consume. Um, we hope they like milk and cheese and ice cream and butter and all those good things. What I've always done is what I enjoy doing. It's what I hope my family will continue to do in the future. I'm Gerald Heatwell. I'm Anita Heatwell. I'm Monty Heatwell. And, and I'm, I'm dedicated, dedicated to, to dairy, dairy, our cows, our, our milk, milk, and our, our land. land. It's time to put your transplants in the ground. Chris Mullen shows us how to grow ingredients for your own salsa from the ground up. Hi, and welcome to Virginia State University's Randolph Farm. Today we're gonna to be talking about salsa. One of the crops that you use to make salsa. Things like onions, tomatoes, and peppers. Right beside me here you see some onions. These have been growing now for three or four weeks. They're an early crop. The tomatoes and the peppers are more of a summer crop. The ones that you're thinking about planting right now. Now let's go look at those and see how we plant them and I'll give you some tips that might help you. All right, we're thinking about tomatoes, especially this time of the year as it warms up. And we've got a flat of beautiful tomatoes here, ready to go in the ground. The soil temperature is high enough to plant these now. I like to have some nice tilled up garden soil like this uh, that's had maybe compost tilled in, a couple inches of compost tilled in, or we can put it in the planting hole. Uh, this tomato is uh, ready to plant. What I like to do, tomatoes will send shoots, uh, send roots all the way up and down the stem that you bury. So I'm going to take those bottom leaves off and the way I like to do it is dig a nice nice deep hole here. Get a little bit of this compost material, put it in there and mix it up very well. Then we're going to kind of make a, another hole. Okay, then we're going to backfill all around this plant. Make sure that's making sure that it's about two, three inches deep, making sure that that root ball is way down there. We want those roots to come out of that stem and really help stabilize the plant. The roots are the ones that uh, take all the nutrients and water up. Uh, then, speaking of water, that's the next thing we need to do is make sure that we get water around this new transplant. Uh, they really need water. They can start to dry out quickly as it's windy out here and sunny and it's in the ground now. We want to think about trellising this up, whether you're staking it and tying it or putting cages around it to make sure that it holds up. Well, this soil is pretty good. We're lucky to have good soil here that we've built up over the years. If your soil is not quite this uh, sandy and has a little bit more red clay in it, you might want to add a little bit more organic matter than I'm talking about here. Um, these are peppers, and these are some snack peppers, really nice uh, sweet peppers. Of course, bell peppers, hot peppers are out there too. But what you want to do with, with peppers is also plant them deep. They're in the same family as the tomatoes, and we want to plant them. We might take a leaf off of that right there, make sure we still got some leaves on it. We're again going to dig a hole, make sure that this is going to go pretty deep too. What we don't want is the, the peppers falling over. So we'll add a little bit of that compost material in this hole and going to make sure that we get it all mixed up. We're going to dig this and bury the pepper also. So many times people will put peppers right at 
the pot line, the soil line from the pot, and they'll tend to fall over in the wind and it really hurts them, takes them a little bit longer to, uh, to get up. Nice, stable now. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on, on this plant. That's so important, these transplants, they can dry out so quickly in the hot sun and the wind. Of course, just like the tomatoes, these are gonna to need to be trellised up um, with cages, netting, stakes. Uh, don't need to be spaced as far apart as the tomatoes. But there we go, nice, uh, nice planting of that pepper and the tomato. Well, for more information on any of this, please contact your local Cooperative Extension office. For From the Ground Up, I'm Chris Mullins. We'll see you next time. Onions, especially fresh local spring onions, are great in a salad or cooked with other vegetables, but they can also be a standalone dish. Carissa Jackson has the recipe for us next in the heart of the home. We don't keep up with the Joneses. Yard of the month? Try yard of the century. We out Jones the Joneses. Everybody's not as good at this as we are. Oh, they don't think I see them counting my day lilies. But I see. We could get the grass stains out, but why would we? One of the first plants most gardeners put out in the spring are onions. Virginia is not a major onion producing region, but many gardeners enjoy planting them for personal use. They need well-drained, loamy soil and plenty of fertilizer. Don't hill up the soil around them, that encourages rot. But make sure they have ample moisture after they start growing. You can plant anything from traditional round bulb varieties to taller green onions. Some people have better success using seedlings or transplants than onion sets, particularly for the larger bulbs. Once they mature, be sure to let them cure in a dry place for several days before storing them. Onions, especially spring onions, are great in a salad, and they're also pretty tasty when served with other vegetables for dinner. But they can be a standalone dish. Carissa Jackson shows us how in the heart of the home. I'm Carissa Jackson, cooking in the kitchen at Meadow Hall at the Meadow Event Park. Today we're going to be making a traditional onion casserole. Really excited about this dish. What we're going to use is about two sliced thin onions. We're going to use butter crackers, my favorite just happened to be Ritz, some sour cream, Parmesan cheese, and butter. The very first thing that we're going to start with is our butter. This is one half cup of butter and we're going to put it in a pan and start to melt it over medium heat. As it's melting, I just wanna show you how I chopped up most of our onion. I just do slices. Some people like to go ahead and push theirs and just make rings. I tend to cut mine in fourths, just because it's easier to spread throughout the pan. All right. Being that it's springtime, you can find onions almost everywhere you go. For a recipe like this, we're gonna use two onions, but if you have to take something to a church picnic, you can use five or 10. You can just keep um, doubling up on the recipe until you've made as much as you want to. Onions are grown all over the state of Virginia. They're really fresh right now, so I'm excited to make this dish. We're gonna add our onions. Notice that you did not hear a sizzle. What we don't wanna do with this dish is start to kind of saute our onions the same way you would do if you were making a steak or something like that. What we wanna do is to get our onions a little bit tender before we add our mixture of sour cream and Parmesan cheese and bake it in the oven. So that's why I have it over low heat. Just wanna melt the butter and get the onions tender. I'm gonna add a little bit of our onions in at a time just to make sure each piece of the onion is coated in butter. Also the perfect time to add in your seasonings, and I'm gonna be using salt and pepper. And this you can do to taste. And we're gonna to wanna to let this simmer for about 10 minutes. You don't wanna skim on the cooking time because that's really what produces the flavor of this dish. I know sometimes it's really easy to wanna rush or wanna take the fast way out, um, but for this dish and to get the uh, most out of your onions, we wanna make sure that we 
are slow cooking it for about 10 minutes on low heat. So now our onions are very tender and we're gonna go ahead and add them to a very large mixing bowl. Maybe the same one you started with because this is the same one I started with. And then we are going to add our sour cream to it and mix it evenly. I know a lot of people are probably wondering why I'm using onions as a standalone dish, but it absolutely can be used as a standalone dish. A lot of times we use onions to accent a steak that we're cooking or to give something else more flavor, but onions have such a unique flavor of their own that it's a little bit time we give them their opportunity to shine. So we are mixing up our onion mixture here, and then we're gonna put half of it in an already greased baking dish. Just about half, just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Then we're gonna add half of our Parmesan cheese. So about one fourth cup because we have a half cup here. We're gonna add the remaining of our onion mixture. The rest of our Parmesan cheese. And then we're gonna to top it with some crushed butter crackers. We're gonna put this in the oven for about 30 minutes on 375. Our onion casserole is out of the oven and it smells amazing. Butter crackers are nice and warm, so we're gonna go ahead and add this to a bowl. Sometimes I like to eat this as a main course by itself and I don't even have anything else with it. It's just so good. So here you have it, onion casserole. It's a perfect dish to eat by itself or as a side dish and it's something awesome to bring to those spring potlucks. I'm Caressa Jackson for Heart of the Home. Come and get it. Recipes from the Heart of the Home can be found on the Virginia Farm Bureau website at vafarmbureau.org. We all want healthy rivers and streams, but we can't do that without help from Virginia's landowners. Resource Management Plans, or RMPs, are part of a voluntary program that helps farmers get credit for cleaning up our waters. And once you have an RMP, you are exempt from any new water quality requirements for nine years. The Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation has funds available to help you implement these plans. Contact the department today to learn more. Thank you. This message is sponsored by Virginia's Agriculture Community. Not many private colleges offer an agriculture major, but as Dave Miller reports, students at Ferrum College can pick from several different studies to have a career in agriculture. There's at least one college of agriculture in every state in the U.S. Add Ferrum College to that list. Nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, Ferrum offers four different emphasis areas for students, including agronomy, agribusiness, animal science, and horticulture. Ferrum frequently partners with local growers who help provide expertise and experience for the students. In fact, the local Franklin County Cooperative Extension Agent is a recent graduate. That's just one of the ag-related careers students are considering. Agriculture is the most progressive, the most economically diverse field that you could potentially get into. Just the sheer amount of job opportunities is staggering. You could work as, you can work for yourself, as your own boss, as a sole proprietor. You could work in a partnership, you can work for an LLC. You could work for a huge agricultural conglomerate. I mean, really, the choices are unlimited. And it can really be tailored to your specific interests. So if you have an interest in animal science, in genetics, if you have an interest in plant breeding of a specific species, those job opportunities are definitely 
out there, and they're hiring, and it's only slated to increase. There's been a mad push, a mad rush, to hire graduates with this broad-based background that Ferrum offers. Since ninth grade, Mary Hammond wanted to be enrolled in an agronomy program in college. On her first day touring Ferrum, she spotted a nearby silage chopper driving and immediately told her parents that this was where she wanted to be. In her first class, she received hands-on experience and got to work with a local farmer working on cover crop trial mixtures. Those are the types of experiences she's glad that Ferrum offers. Ferrum College to me represents home and a new start. Ferrum College isn't really concerned about your previous educational experiences. They just want you to succeed here. And if you put forth 100%, your professors are going to put forth 110% because they're that concerned with your academics and ultimately that concerned with the next phase in your life. And I fully believe that Ferrum College has prepared me for when I graduate in December that I'm going to have a full-time job in January because with the way that the curriculum is staggered here, the agriculture science students get a broad overview of the entire agriculture industry. With about 1,200 students and more than 80 clubs and organizations, Ferrum College is a small community where students put their classroom learning to work right away, including learning why modern farm practices are important. I've learned incredible amounts of things that I've been able to take back to my farm and actually teach my farm and the people that work on my farm. So that, that is invaluable and I really encourage people to be able to go and get an agricultural education and be able to inform because we're all on the front lines of agriculture. No matter where you are in agriculture, people are gonna come up to you and say, why are you putting hormones in my chicken? You're a beef farmer. You have no clue, but you are expected to answer that question. We have to be all educated in all sectors of agriculture so that we can properly educate our consumers on being able to provide them with the best quality meats and produce. If you're looking to study agriculture in a smaller setting than a land-grant university, Ferrum could be a good choice. A small liberal arts institution like Ferrum can really carve out a very effective niche for itself in the agricultural arena, especially when you're talking about organic production or perhaps agroecology, which is the fusion of the ecological sciences and agricultural systems rolled all into one. I think that's really going to be our defining niche in the coming 10 to 15 years. These are just options that you don't necessarily find at some of these larger institutions. And that, coupled with the ability to directly work with local farmers, either in class or as a part of an internship or a practicum, which is essentially a hands-on activity that benefits the community, in some way, shape, or form, really all kind of coalesces together for a very unique experience. Ferrum College is surrounded by mountains, lakes, state parks, and historic small towns. Students say Ferrum is in the middle of somewhere beautiful, and that includes farm country. From Franklin County, this is Dave Miller. That's going to do it for this edition of Real Virginia. We're so glad you could join us to celebrate the bounty Virginia has to offer. Whether it's your home, your garden, or your landscape, we're proud to say that this is Real Virginia. So for everyone from the Virginia Farm Bureau, thanks for watching. Make it a good week.